sectors. Uh, infrastructure has been in focus ever since the election outcome because quite clearly the new government's focus seems to be on infrastructure. That's something that came out from the president address as well. Parag Parikh, ED and CFO of Gammon Infra is with us now. Uh, Parag, hi, good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, from whatever you've heard so far, do you get a belief that things would genuinely change over the next 6 to 12 months? Yes, I think uh, we all have been uh, quite optimistic and uh, hopeful on uh, things changing with the new government. And at least uh, in the initial few weeks, uh, the right signals are being sent across. So I think that's very, very important. Both. I think when we look at uh, a model of Gujarat as a state, especially for uh, the sector that we are in of infrastructure, you have good roads, good network. And uh, the idea is to replicate, you know, a similar model on a far larger scale. And uh, the biggest uh, disappointment for us so far has been in terms of the bureaucracy, the slow decision-making process when it came to projects, newer opportunities slowed down. So these were the challenges that were being faced by the industry. And at least I think when you uh, hear the, the, the few sort of first areas for concentration, infrastructure has been there. Uh, we already heard about the, the, the diamond uh, uh, quadrilateral uh, for the rail network, which is likely to uh, come up as a big focus. Roads again is something which has uh, been uh, there in the past and uh, likely to spur up again very soon. Third, uh, I think when you look at it as a more holistic uh, issue and even from yesterday's speech of uh, the Prime Minister, the fact that you know housing, electricity uh, is, is being supplied by 2020, in, in some form you know directly and indirectly gives a push to the infrastructure as a sector. So we are quite hopeful with the initial signals being right that uh, clearly a lot more opportunities would come in in terms of newer businesses and B, the bigger challenge as I mentioned of slow decision making process, projects getting stuck in between, land issues, clearances issues, I think those should get sorted out. The, uh, minister, uh, the PM has also mentioned uh, I think at various points of time that he wants a faster decision making process through a lower hierarchical process. And with all of that coming up, uh, we are quite hopeful that over the next six months, uh, you should see some uh, positive, uh, productive on-ground action. At this point, of course, uh, it, it's slightly early in terms of seeing any on-ground improvement. But uh, as I mentioned, the signals are right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Parikh, hi. Thanks very much for joining in this morning. Uh, just wanted your opinion with regards to what we can see on the road side because we do understand that there, that is possibly going to see a big boost. There is, you know, some contemplation of uh, Japanese and Korean investors showing interest uh, within the road space and maybe there could be a fund and there could be some PPP model which could be envisaged. In your sense, uh, do you, what is the feasibility of this and what do you think needs to be the first thing that needs to be executed or a low-hanging fruit that can be, uh, you know, executed right away within the road space right so I think uh, from the PPP uh, space and yes uh, with uh, a renewed interest potentially coming you know from Korean Japanese investors I think one of the biggest uh, bottlenecks in the uh, road sector that we were facing was twofold a uh, projects took time to complete and commission uh, and it led to a huge cost overrun simply because land was not made available or some clearances were not in place. So I think you know the, what uh, the government needs to fix in is in terms of you know getting the zero date or the start date right. As long as you know all of this is made available then you are at least certain from a developer and an investor's perspective that you don't expect the project to get slowed down or held up once started. So I think that's one big focus area. The other bigger focus area is that while you know numerous investments have been done by various developers out here, the projects got commissioned and the community for recycling these projects has been very very limited and that's primarily to do with two reasons. One, the existing concessions have certain limitations in terms of what to exit, when to exit and in some restrictions where the original promoter developers could not exit. So I think you know some relaxation there coupled with the fact that you know you have an appetite of investors especially in international investors like uh, Japanese and Korean who look at commissioned developed projects with a very steady cash flow with a low expectation on yield 
bringing in you know the necessary uh, ability to churn these projects so they can sort of look at it as a long term stable yield while the existing developers can look at you know churning some of these projects and using those funds to reinvent and develop into newer projects so i think these are the two large aspects uh, which uh, i see coming up in terms of the roads model and uh, what it does is as i said to the roads model it then therefore brings in a large a lot more appetite when it comes to newer opportunities so if you see over the last uh, nearly now 12 to 18 months there have been very limited opportunities on the road sector and the problem has been twofold one the fact that you know the readiness of the government to put out projects b obviously uh, also because of the non recycling of projects the appetite of investors has also come down so i think with both of this uh, leading to a slowdown over the last few months i think immediately the action can get kick started by ensuring that uh, the, uh, the government sort of you know uh, helps the developers at least in ensuring the fact that some of the bottlenecks you know which lead to a delayed commissioning of projects that can get elevated and be in terms of some of the relaxations which further can bring in foreign investors to buy into or partner into some of these projects okay so uh, parak uh, you know last year was a loss making year for you uh, would would this year be any different so uh, if you look at it i think uh, in the midst of all of this and that's something which also reflects clearly for us i think in the first quarter we actually gave back to projects simply because of the fact that we had some of these bottlenecks and we could not see the visibility of when to start these projects so to that extent we've already booked some lo uh, losses in the first quarter but as things proceed uh, we have a few projects which are likely to get commissioned over this year and uh, therefore uh, call it revenues cash flows will start get getting generated hmm Okay, some statements coming in from Mohan Das Pai with regards to emphasis where the Sika appointment is a good decision according to him. It has removed uncertainties, and the founder Raj, according to him, has come to an end. So some more statements coming in with regards to emphasis. But uh, Mr. Parikh just wanted to actually focus on um, you know your margin picture then because. do you expect your margins to possibly sustain you anyway work at very elevated margins but what would be the sustainable run rate or the average for fi 15 so i think uh, in terms of our ebitda and operating margins our operating margins will continue to sustain simply because uh, when you look at some of these projects uh, these projects uh, clearly tend to uh, demonstrate a very high level of operating margin when it comes to the annuity projects toll projects or for that matter even the pot project that we have uh, all of this you know uh, and our console bases are at a high of, of more than 60% and even as we commission some of the newer projects over the next few months uh, operating margins are likely to continue to sustain okay just one last question then uh, mr parik then we would not see you uh you know exiting from any projects even though there might be any sort of uh, delays and clearances as of now on the hope that it will expedite well we'll have to take a review on that as things progress but uh, yes I, uh, in the last quarter as you saw us uh, some of the projects which were awarded nearly 2 years back uh, could not sort of proceed due to want of some of the problems that i mentioned to you yeah but uh, i think what what is important for us to sort of you know recognize is that as the new government comes in some of these issues have been represented from time to time from the entire industry and various developers and once that that gets sorted out you clearly see a lot more opportunities being taken up okay fair enough uh, mr parik thank you very much for joining in so that's the word coming in from gamin infra that stock is holding up with a gain of around 1.6% at this point in time and for the